uh, Major Nelson. I mean, oh my God. So then I had met prior to all this, um, I had met through the makeup man on All That Glitters. Uh, I had met Patrick Duffy. We stopped off at Patrick's house on the way to uh, the location. <laughs> and I walked in and there was a man from Atlantis. I was like, oh my God, who is this man from Atlantis? So I had Major Nelson and man from Atlantis. And um, when we all met uh, in Burbank, when we were all finally cast, um, and I knew of Jim Davis, I didn't know Ken, I didn't know Charlene. And, but when I saw Barbara Belgettas, I thought, this is an odd group of people. We have, you know, Major Nelson, man from Atlantis, and the classiest woman on Broadway, Barbara Belgettas. I thought, what is this show? Kind of a mixture, kind of an odd assortment of people. <laughs> and now it became our family. So I was uh, beyond thrilled. When did you get the sense of, you know, this could be the one that changes my life? Like, was it in those first five episodes? Was it like after you came back for a second season and it got a full season pickup? No, it it never was, was it going to change my life? Um, I don't think of things like that. I do, I, I do one thing at a time. I focus on that and I don't, you know, it's just my personality. I just do the best job I can in the moment, end of story. And my whole thing, because I was a mother, my whole thing was focused on, are the kids okay? How are the horses? How are the dogs and cats? And, you know, my whole thing was like, okay, I'm away from home for two months. And that was a shock to our family. And I had to be Martha Stewart. I became Martha Stewart before there was Martha Stewart. <laughs> I was freezing casseroles. God forbid they would not eat for two months. <laughs> so my life became kind of scattered and out of context. And I, what am I doing in Dallas, Texas, for God's sakes? And so that's how it was. And then there, there was a momentum and I didn't think it would change my life. I just knew that it was a good job. I was like, wow, this is a, this is a good job. I love the people I'm working with. And a lot of people weren't happy, not on our set, but a lot of people weren't happy in general with their job. I was thrilled. I loved to see my friends every morning. And even though it was early, <laughs> five, five o'clock. Um, but that's what I loved. I loved uh, you know, it was like going to school and seeing your friends in the morning. And being in the moment, like as I get older, I've learned that, but that's a really good way to be, right? I think we all are just rushing around and thinking about the future. Like being in the moment is really a good way to, it's a good motto to life. That's, that's how it was. It was. When did you get a sense though that, okay, wait, you know, was it like walking down the street when you came back for, you know, like, did you have that first bout of like, wait, I'm famous. The show is going to be a huge thing, even though you are living in the moment where you just had that, like, oh, wow, people really are watching in droves. It, it was gradual. Um, you know, it was, we didn't know. Um, we just were watching when we got picked up. CBS liked it. They they loved it, the cast. And we really, honestly, it, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Uh, we really didn't know. We were just kind of like, you know, in our routine and doing our best work and loving what we were doing. And the scripts were great. And um uh, None of us had been to Dallas before, except Mr. Hagman. And um, that was an interesting time. We were uh, we were in a motel, not a hotel, nothing fancy. We were in a motel in Dallas, Texas. And um, I remember all of us sitting on the floor at the bathtub was filled with ice and several bottles of champagne were there, courtesy of Mr. Hagman. <laughs> And we just looked at each other like, what are we doing here? What is this place? What, what are we doing? And, um, and Neiman Marcus was across the freeway. And I remember clearly 
uh, because I didn't have much to do, I thought I have, I'm playing a woman who's married to a very rich man in Texas. And I don't know anything about Texas women. So I'm going to go over to Neiman Marcus and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to get my nails done one day. I'm going to get my hair done another day. I'm going to listen. And that's how Sue Ellen Ewing was created because I listened and I took notes about what they were saying and uh, what they were buying, how they were doing their hair, you know, their nails, what they talk about, what do they buy? Uh, what's important to them? And I remember a funny, a funny line where I was in, I was listening to, to a conversation and they said, oh, honey, I've got, I've got to go because I have to go home and fluff and fold. And I thought fluff and fold, they have to go home and do the laundry. That's what I thought. Well, fluff and fold was not laundry. Fluff and fold was, I have to go fluff and fold and get ready for my husband when he comes home. That was fluff and fold. Those were little idiosyncrasies that I picked up along the way. And I, I that's how Sue Ellen became. I didn't know how to, how to, how to talk Texas talk. I had to listen and learn. And I did. We have Neiman Marcus to thank for Sue Ellen Ewing, in part. <laughs> Absolutely. I still love them. <laughs> Well, how did, when did you realize, you know, man from Atlantis and, you know, I dream a genie, you know, look, we all, you, we all come and work on ma different sets and, you know, you have colleagues and you talk at craft services, but, you know, you did have a lifelong friendship with Larry, you know, you have a lifelong friendship with Patrick. Like, when did that magic start? Like, was it love at first sight for the three of you? Like, how did this develop? <laughs> well, you know, it did because I had, I had the, uh, the wonderful backstory of, of having that crush on Major Nelson and then meeting Patrick Duffy. And um, it, the three of us just clicked. And then Larry and I, when we started working together, even though there were little small things, sort of snippets of a scene or a little thing, I thought, Sue Ellen, why did you marry this guy? He's not nice. He's not a good husband. He's not a, won't be a good father. How, what happened here? And the three of us just, I don't know, it was charisma. It was very charismatic between Larry and I. There was a chemistry that I didn't understand, but I felt it. And um, he could be so bad. And then I'd fight him back. I and mean, this is off screen. And, and one day, I think one night we had a scene and I was in a black negligee thing. And he asked me to put a sew button on his shirt. I said, I don't sew buttons on shirts. And it started. And I think that was a scene. Oh, I know. On the way home, Larry told me I was not good in that scene. He denied it for years. I said, to Larry, do you remember when you told me that I was not good in that scene with you? And he said, oh, no, no, no. no. I never said that. I never said that. He did. And I never forgot it. Because... But what happened was, I thought internally, I'll show you, you rat, that I'm I can hold my my own with you, um, because I think he was trying to put me down in a in a not nice way, and I got I fought him right back. So it started, and there was there was this we could be we could be just laughing and joking off camera, and the director would say, okay, we're ready, blah blah blah. And we would just turn into those people immediately. And I'd never had that experience before. And um, he was generous. He was absolutely divine, uh, an actor extraordinaire. And uh, one day he, uh, we were having this fight scene and he gently, I was not in my light. I was in this sort of hot, angry moment. And I wasn't in my light. I remember he took my shoulders and he gently just moved me over so I could be in the light. So kind. And most actors would not have done that. They would have let me be in the shade. <laughs> but Larry was extraordinary, a uh, consummate actor. Did you ever internalize, like, right, like, 